Good morning everybody. How are you today? Welcome to a chilly day in London. Oh, I can see my breath. Oh my goodness. I don't know what the temperature is. All I know is it's chilly, but it's dry. So I've raced down here today to just, just have a little bit of outside time. Now, I say I raced down here today. That's a lie, I didn't. <laughs> I had my chicken poo delivery to my home address. It's that, uh, what's it called, six times, which I used a little bit of last year and it was great. So I thought, right, push the boat out, it's 15 quid a sack. So I bought myself a sack of chicken poo 6x, that's a bit of a tongue twister, and it got delivered last, I don't know, last week sometime. I haven't managed to get down to the garden since it's delivered because we have just had lashing, lashing rain and high winds. I'll talk about that in a sec. So finally today is my chance. Honestly, I don't feel like it today. I'm just not feeling it. It's funny, isn't it? That does happen. I, I just feel really tired at the moment and my stupid knees haven't been too great, but... I'm hoping that despite you feeling tired, I'll just do a couple of small jobs today and hopefully the fresh air, the light outside, the birds. Can you hear them? They've been, they've been going mad. I've only been here sort of 15 minutes or so, but the bird song is lovely. So I'm hoping all that will give me a bit of an energy boost. <clears throat> so having dragged that, I don't know how much it weighs, it weighs a ton, I put it in my granny trolley because I thought be sensible, don't carry it on your back, put it in the trolley. My 10 minute walk to the garden took about 17 minutes this morning because I kept having to stop and have a breather. Anyway, that's down here all ready for the new growing season. I'll apply it sort of just before, as I'm preparing <clears throat> the beds, as I'm sort of having a little rake over and make sure I've got a nice fine tilt. I'll apply it at that point. So, having <laughs> having dumped my huge sack of chicken poo off, thankfully it sealed really well, so when it was sitting in my communal hallway, it didn't stink the house out. <clears throat> so the first thing I did when I got here, after having dumped that sack off, was just check <clears throat> for wind damage. Because a few days ago we had an absolute holy one night, it was awful. <clears throat> I had friends staying with me, they didn't get a super wink, I didn't get a sleep of wink, wink of sleep, <laughs> they didn't get a sleep of wink, wink of sleep. None of us got a wink of sleep because the roof was groaning and creaking. Thank goodness. The only thing was, I'm just looking now, one of my compost bin lids had gone flying, but I managed to find it. So that's back in place, but no other damage, thankfully, because I know from looking at some of your pictures in Facebook groups that actually you've had some awful damage greenhouses completely smashed up and all the metalwork buckled polytunnels gone flying i really feel for you guys who've had that kind of damage and i hope that something is salvageable and hopefully some of your plot neighbors will give you a hand and muck in and, and help you get rebuilt i hope you can get sorted before sort of the end of march before we really get going again so today um i'm going to be planting some sweet peas yay first planting of the year i will be getting some of my veg started in about two three weeks or so but they'll be indoors so i'll show you that when we come to it but sweet peas today so i have been given a gift of some sweet peas from my friend jackie they've come halfway around the world they're precious and anyone who's seen me chatting about sweet peas before will know <laughs> i can't grow them I just never have any luck. Every year I try and I think maybe one year by accident I actually got a couple to grow. So because these are so precious, I've actually given half of them to my sister because she only has to look at a packet of sweet peas and then vroom, they're climbing all over her summer house in bloom for months and months and months, they're gorgeous. So I've given some to her just in case I completely mess up with these. And with the ones I've got left, I'm going to sow some today to put in the cold frame. And then I'm going to have some that I start indoors. I'm going to chip them. 
So what my sister does, apparently, um, I thought she just chucked them in the ground, <coughs> on a baking sheet with some moist um, kitchen towel, she puts all the seeds on that, then covers it in cling film and puts it in the iron cupboard. So, half of these are going to go home with me and half I'm going to do in the cold frame. But I'm also going to have to fix the cold frame today because if you remember back in, I don't know, September or October when I was strimming, the strimmer flicked a stone up and it shattered one of the panes of glasses. <sighs> so I'm going to have to have a little, little mess around fix with that today as well. Yeah, I've got ideas. Okay, let's get stuck into some seed sowing. Brr, it's mighty chilly. I'm going to use good old loo roll holders to put my sweet peas in. Um, hopefully you've started saving some by now. Yay! If not, if you're not going to have enough, have a trot round to your neighbour's house and ask them to start saving too. So, like I say, I'm, <laughs> I'm rubbish at growing sweet peas. But there's a few things I understand. They don't like their roots being disturbed. Um, well, <laughs> that's it mainly. <laughs> don't know anything about growing sweet peas. Fortunately, I'm a little bit more knowledgeable when it comes to, um, or a little bit more successful, should we say. I don't know about knowledgeable, but I'm a little bit more successful when it comes to growing vegetables. So my first packet, oh, it's a shame actually, um, I wish I could have showed you the seed packets she gave me, which is funny because I just did that video the other day about making seed packets for gifts. She does these beautiful packets, which are, they're sort of almost like origami, with beautiful little stamps on them, absolutely gorgeous, but they're so gorgeous that that's what I've sent on up to my sister and I decanted them into my boring little lunch money envelopes. So I think I'm going to put four in each loo roll holder. This variety is called Mammoth. Mammoth. Well, let's see if I'm going to get Mammoth results from them. So I've got three varieties from Jackie, thank you very much. Or oh, actually I think one of them is a bit of a mixture. So I'm going to do, let's see now, 12 of each of the ones she sent me. Then I've also got some seed left over from my pathetic attempt a couple of years ago. <laughs> so I'll give those a go again. I haven't got quite enough loo roll pots today so what I'm doing is I'm using the loo roll pots for the ones Jackie sent and then I'm just going to use these little um, biodegradable they're sort of just like a recycled paper pot the idea being that the whole thing can then get planted in the soil if you remember last year I did um, half of my cocoa de pampol in these it's fine by the end of the summer it completely they're pretty much completely rotted give those a bit of a covering not huge there's a sort of there's a vague general rule that you cover your seeds with about the depth of that seed again in compost some things don't like to be covered at all so for instance my celery and celeriac I won't cover them at all and importantly don't forget as you go along this is the thing a sort of thing I always forget is to put a label in. I've spelt mammoth incorrectly, I think. Right, let's get on with the other ones from Jackie are called Late Spence, and then this one, which is a mixture of Zinfandel, Old Spice, and April in Paris. Oh, how perfect! I love April in Paris. Right, so I'm going to get on with sewing those, and then we'll go and see what we can do about this blinking boss stop cold frame. <laughs> Right, herein lies the problem. So, I think, yeah, that came out of one of Sean's scrap piles, so I think I might be able to cut, add, yeah, let's take that back to the shed to cut. 
but here I'm thinking, can I get this pain out? Put it there. I think I'm going to try that. Hopefully this will slot in on the end. Get lined up. Yeah. Okay, so at least this end is now right. This end's rather tight, so what I'll do. My thinking is it's because it's big rosemary is here that's a bit of protection anyway and then if I cut that piece of plastic and I put out a stick with a bit of duct tape and wedge it in here that might work right let's go back to the shed and cut this oh let's measure it first oh, have I got my pencil on my hair so it needs to be <coughs> make a couple of strips from there, turn them sideways to put there. Right. Yeah, let's give it a go. We don't know. I mean, if I don't try, I won't know, will I? Yeah, let's give that a go. Yay! First seeds of the year are in the cold frame. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Uh, there'll be nothing else in here till, oh, April? Good job, really, seeing as I'm using it for storage. Look at all that. Um, I'm delighted to get those in. Fingers crossed, and I'll do some at home too. Now, the fix did not work out as I hoped. <laughs> Actually, you might be able to see it from out here better. That plastic, I just couldn't cut it. I tried with this. Look, you can see where I've tried to cut it. I tried with the saw, I tried with a knife. Nothing was going through, so. It's all jammed up there for now with a piece of cardboard, which I've just duct taped for now. So hopefully that will A, keep out the nasty cold drafts and B, well, it's a little bit of insulation, isn't it? And put it this way, I've got no money for anything fancy pants like, oh, I don't know, a new pane of glass. Look at this sticking out of the end there. What a mess. But look the hole is filled in hopefully that will be enough for my little plants to get going where are they that's all junk that's all junk that's all junk there they are right at the end oh we're all itching to get going aren't we nothing else now for a couple of weeks <sighs> i don't know why but i feel thoroughly pooped oh my goodness i've only been here for about an hour and a half. All I've done is sew my lovely little sweet peas, thank you Jackie, and do that botch of a fix up for the cold frame. I think it'll be alright for now. Um, yeah, I was hoping that coming down here would kind of give me a bit of a, give me a bit of <laughs> energy. And I haven't got any energy, but just these few minutes, this hour and a half, whatever, down here, 
although my body is lacking energy and feeling a bit chilly, my soul feels energized. And isn't that the great thing about our gardens? You know, there's lots to do. There will be lots to do, but it doesn't all have to be done today. I think it's just as important, you know, work hard, stay on top of things, but days like today, you know what, don't force yourself, don't kill yourself, just enjoy the fact that you've got a garden and some outside space. Oh, it's delicious. And you know, getting those first seeds in, okay, they're not vegetables, they're not going to feed me, but hopefully if they grow, I'll have them going up the teepees that I'm going to have the climbing squash on this year. So they'll bring in the pollinators, you know, it's having the flowers, it's a symbiotic relationship, isn't it? So getting those first seeds in, it feels great. I'm quite disciplined about not racing ahead too quickly. And like I said, I'll sow a couple of things in a couple of weeks and then I won't be touching the compost for well, another, gosh, getting on for six, seven weeks, it'll be towards the end of March. But just getting those in today, it sort of reminds me, every time we plant a seed, we plant all our hopes and dreams too. I hope my sweet peas come up. But even if they don't, I'm optimistic for the rest of the garden just that act of sowing a seed, nurturing it, and then eventually eating it. What a wonderful process. What an absolutely amazing thing. And we're so lucky to have gardens because we get to sow these seeds and sow our optimism. And I can't wait for summer, yay! Don't get ahead of yourself, baby. I'm really looking forward to the end of March when seed sowing begins in earnest. For now, I'm going to toddle off back home with a considerably lighter granny trolley now that 6x is out of it. But I have filled it up again because I'm taking home some of my propagators and I've taken out half of the, the corn from here to get that home to carry on getting the kernels off with all the various methods everyone suggested. So I think it's time for me to go and have a quiet afternoon at home, put the radio on, play with my corn cobs, and dream about warmer days. So for now I say cheerio. I hope you're all well and not getting too impatient about the sewing. And I know there's loads of you who are still under snow. My goodness, we've got loads of time yet. Just enjoy the birdsong in the meantime. Take care everyone.